Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name's Justin. Okay, so let's break down the cap percussion lineup. Previously, it had been drums like the Cap Percussion KT4, the Cap Percussion KT3, all made by a company called Medelli for Cap Percussion. But a couple of years ago, they stopped making those drums, and now they have a new manufacturing partner. I believe it's Cherub Technology who owns and operates NuX. All of these drums are basically modified version of their NuX counterparts. So the KT100 is a reskinned DM1X, the KT150 is a reskinned DM210, the KT200 is a reskinned DM4S, and the KT300 is a modified NuX DM7X. I already covered the KT200 a couple years ago in a video. If you want to learn about that, go watch that video. But in today's video, we're just going to be covering the KT150 and the KT300. Apparently, the official Cap Percussion website doesn't even have the KT150 as an official listing yet, so I have to go off of third-party websites. And all they say is that the snare drum is 8 inches across and that it's dual zone. But if we compare this drum set to the new X counterpart that it's based on, you'll see that all the cymbals are dual zone 10 inch pads, while the snare and toms are dual zone as well, but 8 inches across. Moving over to the drum module, you get 15 factory kits featuring 160 sounds. On the front of the module, you'll see a very large screen, a coaching button, metronome and a reverb button. On the back, you'll notice that there's an extra cymbal input, so if you want to buy a second crash, it will actually support it. You got an eighth inch aux input, right and left module outputs, which I used to record the, the playing examples for this video. You got USB MIDI and a headphone jack. So as you can probably tell, super, super basic stuff. Now let's jump ahead into the pros and cons of this drum set. Starting off with the good stuff. This drum set does have all mesh pads, which is nice to see. It's also nice that they actually include a free kick drum pedal. It's definitely very, very beginner range, but it will save you some money because it's included. And then finally, I like the fact that even though the screen is very basic, it is kind of huge compared to other screens, even on my Roland TD30. This screen is actually bigger than that. All right, so as far as downsides of this drum set, one thing you'll notice from my playing footage is me trying to play a rim shot and instead triggering a cross stick sound. Most beginner electronic drum sets have a basic problem. They can't really tell if you're playing cross stick or doing a rim shot. So instead they have a crossover point. They'll consider you playing cross stick if you play really quietly on the rim, and they'll consider a rim shot if you play really hard. It sounds like a smart idea, but in practice it never really works that well. So instead I'm more of a fan of just having a dedicated button next to the screen that lets you tell it when you wanna play cross stick. Now as far as the other downsides, it's mostly the stuff common across cheaper electronic drum sets a pretty poor sounding module. You don't have a third zone on the ride cymbal. But of course, all those downsides can be understandable and forgiven if the price is really aggressive. The problem is Cap Percussion is not being aggressive with their pricing. They're being optimistic on how much they can charge for the level of components that they're offering. The main competition to this drum set is the Alesis Nitro Mesh. It has drums of the exact same sizes and a module of a similar tier, $100 less than the Cap Percussion KT150. But of course, if Cap Percussion didn't really want to budge on their pricing model, they could have added more components, like the Alesis Nitro Mesh Expanded Edition. They have four toms and they have two crashes. Now, of course, that's just my two cents. If you feel like buying it, by all means, go try it out at a store. And if you like it, go purchase it. Now let's jump ahead two tiers to the Cap Percussion KT300 at $1,000. So here are the sizes of the drums. You get a 12 inch hi-hat, you got two crash cymbals that are 12 inches across, the ride cymbal is 14 inches across, and it's triple zone. The snare drum is 10 inches across, and the toms are 8 inches across. All those are dual zone. The weight of the entire drum set is roughly 78 pounds. On the drum module side of things, you get 270 sounds, 30 preset kits that are all organized by genre, and 18 blank user kits. The drum module has a built-in recorder function, built-in practice features, and you can adjust the reverb, chorus, and EQ, along with compression. As far as ports go, you got the headphone jack, aux in, MIDI out over five pin, USB MIDI, quarter inch right and left outputs, and an extra input for an extra tom or an extra crash cymbal. Now, as far as the module as a whole, where would I rank this as far as sound quality, interface, and port selection against its $1,000 competition? This is just based on the stuff I've played. 
but I would say the Alesis Crimson 2 Special Edition is at the very bottom because it has poor sound quality and it has some sort of hi-hat MIDI issue when using with software that I learned about kind of recently. One step above that would probably be the Simmons SD1250, but still not that great. It looks cooler than it actually is. One step above that would be the Cap Percussion KT300 module. It doesn't have like high bitrate samples with wide dynamic range. You're not getting that. But because of the way they mixed the sounds, even though I knew in the back of my head the sounds weren't high quality, I had a lot of fun playing with them. One tier above this would probably be the Roland TD-07. It is a step back as far as port selection, but as far as the internal sound quality and the editing features, that's what makes it rise above stuff from Simmons and Cap Percussion and stuff like that. And then about one light year ahead of all the competing modules is the Yamaha DTX Pro. This thing is so good, it's not even funny. All of the budget went towards making the module great, and the pads they had to include were mostly rubber. So basically, I feel like the Cap Percussion KT300 stacks up about middle of the pack when it comes to drum modules around this price tag. Now let's take a step back and talk about the overall pros and cons of this drum set and whether or not it's worth buying. Yet again, you do get a free kick drum pedal in the box, which is great. I also like the fact that all the mesh heads are made by Remo because apparently they don't have a locked down relationship with Roland anymore. They're making mesh heads for other companies like New X, Cap Percussion, and Gava. It's also nice to get two crash cymbals on a drum set of this price range, and they're all rubber. It's none of that nonsense half plastic on the top and half rubber on the bottom. And it's easy to move them around to the exact right angle for your drumming because they have cymbal boom arms on the drum rack. Moving over to the drum module, I like the fact that the interface is very easy to find your way around. They got this center knob that lets you adjust the genre of drum set, and then you press in to go through the kits inside of that genre. If you're wondering if you've seen this sort of interface before and why it looks so familiar, it's because they're kind of ripping off the Roland TD25 interface. It's also nice to have a decent sized color screen on the front, which you would think would be a given with all electronic drums, but most companies still don't have color screens. I also like the fact that you have a built-in reverb control and a built-in compression control. Now, as far as the quality of the drums and cymbals themselves, I think they are pretty darn decent. Like they're not as low quality as stuff you'd buy from Alesis, but I don't know if you could say they're on par with the quality of Yamaha and Roland. It would have to be like a long-term review for me to really know for sure. Okay, so now let's move ahead to some of the disadvantages, some of the cons of this drum set. For some reason, I was adjusting the tuning control and it didn't pitch my drums up or down. It actually adjusted the volume of the drums as a whole or maybe it was just the individual instrument. It was just kind of weird. Maybe there's some sort of toggle switch somewhere that I just didn't see. While I do appreciate the sensitivity of the drums, be sure to back down the sensitivity if you're an average level hitter like me. Apparently, whoever was in the factory making the settings is a very, very light hitter. And for some reason, the mass time on some of the drums was set to 15 milliseconds. That's kind of weird. That's like way too aggressive and it adds latency that doesn't need to be there because of the setting is set too high. Now, because the module can't really compete with the Japanese companies, they probably should have made the pads a little bit larger to compete with the Chinese companies, like, you know, like the Alesis stuff and the Millennium stuff and all that sort of thing. So the floor tom should have been bigger and maybe the snare drum could have been up to 12 inches. Also, the kick drum that I was playing on moved all over the place while I was playing the KT-150. Not exactly sure if that's the kick drum's fault or this horrible carping that I was playing on. Okay, so now that you have a decent idea of what this drum set's like, the pros and cons and the specs, let's talk about how it stacks up against the competition at this price range. When it comes to $1,000 drum sets, most companies will choose one of two basic paths. Option one, make a giant drum set and don't really spend that much of the budget on the module. Option two, spend most of your budget on the module and decent quality pads, but make the drum set super, super small. A lot of customers seem to fall into one of those two camps as well. Some people tell me all they care about is getting a big drum set, so they go off and buy the Simmons drum set or the whatever, the Millennium drum set. And then you got the other people that only care about the quality of the components and the module, and they don't really need a big drum set, so they go buy uh, one of the Japanese brands. And then we have this cap percussion drum set, which isn't really in either of those camps. So at the end of the day, I'm a little bit confused on whether or not I really like this drum set or not, because it's not necessarily the best drum set as far as sound or the best drum set as far as how big the drums are. Basically, all I can say is try to play this for yourself and make your own decision. 
All right, so that's my thoughts about the brand new stuff from Cap Percussion. Now let's talk about the parent company, Alternate Mode. The funny thing is that they're kind of 180 from each other. Alternate Mode makes, you know, pro level electronic drum stuff, and Cap Percussion makes beginner level electronic drum stuff. So Alternate Mode makes a wide variety of stuff. For example, they make these conversion pads that go on top of acoustic drums and instantly turns them into one zone electronic drums. They make this kick drum sensor that's basically a competitor to the Roland KD-7. They make another version for hi-hat pedals that actually turns acoustic hi-hat pedals into electronic hi-hat pedals. They also have a relationship with Tubox. They've made a version of it, but it's under the Cap Percussion brand name. You can see it here powering this Trapcat XL. So basically, they make a lot of very niche stuff for certain situations, usually powered by FSR sensors. But what they're best known for is probably the Mallet Cat. This thing has been going since, I believe, 1984, which means it's been going for almost 40 years now. And you can probably imagine, after 40 years of updates, this thing has been polished to pretty much perfection for the kind of electronic drummer that it's aimed at, which is mallet players. You can buy it in several different octaves, which changes the price tag. All the triggers are using FSR technology, so it's not piezo-based like most electronic drums. There is no crosstalk here because FSR just doesn't have that as a problem. And that's a really nice advantage when you have this many triggers this close together. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up the Mallet Cat is that they just did an update to their line. They have a brand new version called the Mallet Cat GS. The standard Mallet Cat doesn't come with built-in sounds, but this new GS version does. And because they have a lot of customers that already own a Mallet Cat, they've thought of them and they are offering the module as a standalone $700 box. Or if you want, you can actually mail them your Mallet Cat and they'll put the module on the inside for about $820. There's roughly 1,000 instruments on the inside using about 14,000 samples. They were licensed from some other third party company. If you need a percussion sound of some kind, it is most likely on this list. The only downside here is that I don't think it has sample import as a feature. Each kit allows you to adjust the reverb, chorus, brightness, and envelope settings of the sounds. You can also layer sounds as well. There's also a lot of very niche, like enthusiast level modes and different features of this thing. I'll put a list of them on screen because I don't have time to read through all of them, but this thing can do nearly anything. Now, when it comes to pricing, it's kind of all over the place. Roughly two to $5,000, depending on how many octaves you want and whether or not you need built-in sounds. Now, because of this high-end pricing, it's basically kind of geared for professionals. If you play in an orchestra and you need a couple of these, you can kind of write it off as a business expense. But if you're just trying to play for fun, or maybe you're just trying to make the occasional YouTube video, this might be overkill for that. All right, so I know what you're thinking. Justin, isn't that like the third shirt you've worn in this video? Very perceptive. But of course, the real question is, is there any legitimate competition against the Mallet Cat? So I did some digging. Over the 40 years or so this product's been out, there's only been four companies that I can find that have ever made competing products. The first competitor was probably the Simmons Silicon Mallet, which crashed and burned with that company, so it's no longer around. The second main competitor was probably Buchla. They had this really interesting uh, sort of like sensor system using radio antennas. Each of your individual mallets could trigger a different sound on the exact same zone. Skipping forward to today, there's only two main competitors. When it comes to the cheaper option, Pearl did make something that looks very compelling on the surface, and it gave me a good first impression when I played it. It's got this aluminum and steel build, and the playing zones are made out of silicon. It's very simple, doesn't come with built-in sounds, it's got these pitch bend controls on the side, and it has an app for your computer, all for a very low price. It seemed very promising. But once I started like reading up on reviews, I do feel like it's not necessarily a surefire option for high-end professional situations. Apparently that silicon plane material doesn't feel quite as high-end as the other options from Wernick and alternate mode. And in this video from 2019, apparently there were big consistency problems when playing at the same sort of velocity on each individual zone. Apparently Pearl did try to address this more recently in a software patch, so it's definitely good to know that Pearl is trying to fix problems and they're listening to the community. But I still don't know if this is actually like a flagship level product. There's a reason why it costs half as much as the Mallet Cat. But you know what? It's good to have cheaper options out there for people that just want something for home use and just getting ideas out on the computer. But a closer competitor to the Mallet Cat is probably the Xylosynth from Wernick. The pricing is pretty similar and everything is custom made from a small company in the UK. Now the Xylosynth looks a lot different because instead of using silicone or foam, it's using wood zones. Even the internals are a lot different. Instead of using FSR sensors, the Xylosynth uses piezos. 
Now, of course, I know the thing that you were wondering when you saw the Xylosynth is what would it sound like if someone played Lamb of God and Meshuggah on this? Now, I was hoping to find some like direct comparisons against the Xylosynth and the Mallet Cat by someone who's really into this world and could really lay out all the differences. But unfortunately, I only see some like forum posts from 2007, 2002. I really don't know which product is better. I'm just putting this out there as an alternative for people that wanna research and figure out what's the best option for them and their situation. Now, I wanna mention here at the end that I am a random punk online that covers electronic drums. I'm more of a full drum set guy and a multi-pad guy. I don't play this kind of percussion. But taking a look as an outsider, I feel like the Mallet Cat GS is basically the safest, best option in this niche of electronic drums. It is very high end, it's got nearly four decades of history, and uh, they do have a good reputation. I highly recommend watching more reviews and trying to get your own feel for what this stuff is like. That way you can make an informed purchase decision not just based on my video. And that is your recap of all the new stuff from Cat Percussion and Alternate Mode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you all in a few.